So the amount of time adults spend watching television is closely monitored by firms because this helps to determine advertising pricing for commercials. Complete parts A through D. Do you think the variable weekly time spent watching television would be normally distributed? Um, now, normal distribution is symmetric, um, but the amount of time people spend watching television is probably not symmetric because say the average weekly time spent watching television is like six hours for for americans okay um you're gonna have some people who watch less and you're gonna have people watch more than six hours but you're gonna have the people who watch more are more likely to be really watching a lot like you could have somebody who's watches 20 30 40 hours of television a week perhaps but on the low end it can't go any lower than zero so you could have outliers that go really high on the high end, but you're going to be capped down at zero on the low end. So this is probably not going to be symmetrically distributed, or symmetrically distributed, not normally distributed. It's probably going to be skewed to the right, as I've explained. <clears throat> According to a certain survey, adults spend 2.45 hours per day on, uh, watching television on a weekend. Um, that's on average. Assume that the standard deviation 1.93 hours. So let's put in 2.45 for the, the mean, and I already have 1.93 in there for the standard deviation. It's as if a random sample of 40 individuals are sampled. Um, describe the sampling distribution of X bar. Um, and it asks for six decimal places. So I'm going to change my decimal precision to six. Um, now it says that the x for a sample size of 40, you are going to have an approximately normal distribution, even though the population is not normal, um, normally distributed. The mean of x bar is going to be the same as the mean of the population, 2.45. And the standard error, standard deviation of x bar, is calculated here, 0 0.305160. That's my standard error and you found that from 1.93 the standard deviation divided by the square root of 40. Um, now I want to go back to four decimal places so I'm going to just quickly do that and it says determine the probability a random sample of 40 adults results in a mean watching time between two and three hours so I already have so I click on between two and three it's already typed in actually um, and my probability is right down below the probability between two of, of the of the sample mean being between two and three. Actually, I should change that to an X bar. Um, 0 0.8941. One consequence of the popularity of the internet is that it is thought to reduce television watching. Suppose that a random sample of 35 individuals who consider themselves to be avid internet users results in a mean time of 2.01 hours watching television on a weekday. Determine the likelihood of obtain, obtaining a sample mean of 2.01 hours or less from a population whose mean is presumed to be 2.45. Well, let's put that in. A sample, first of all, the sample size is 35. What's the probability of getting below 2.01? Uh, well, the probability is 0.0887. It's low probability, but it's not extremely low. Let's use 5% as the, the cutoff for extremely low, and that's what they're using in this course. So is that, is that a significant result? So the answer is no, it's not a significant result because the likelihood is not less than 5%. It's not less than 0 0.05. Now this is an arbitrary cutoff, but it's the one the book uses, so we have to say no.